What's good, Ken Gonda? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again here with a special episode. It's been a long time since I did one of these, but I'm really, really appreciative of everybody supporting the channel. Today I have a brother that is from the States, and you know, he has a really, really good channel, brother Nack Measy. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why so many African Americans may be having trouble uh relocating to, to, to the African continent. And, and maybe what the African continent can do to ease that transition. Brother, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. Like you said, my name is Nak Mizi. I have a channel on YouTube. I also have a group called 50 Deep. Um, and my group is about supporting the black community on two major points. One is standing up against anti-black racism here in the Netherlands. I'm from Brooklyn, though. And the other is community give back programs, uh, tuition reimbursement programs, and also uplifting the youth. All right, brother, and uh, you have a very, uh, a very good channel that focuses on a lot of things, man, martial arts and a lot of history. But um, one of the videos, man, that that I saw that you responded to uh, was uh, K and K Squad, who were living in uh, Accra for about a month, mm -hmm. and they have now relocated back to to Ghana, and they had a little bit of issues with. You know some of the issues that they had with with, with scamming and people not, um, you know, uh, seems like they're taking it could have been taken advantage of, and a lot of people were coming for them. And you you actually was like, no, no, you know what they're saying. I've experienced this also in Ghana. Right. So yeah, so talk to me about about your experience in Ghana and you know how how it happened for you. All right. So what I'm I'm going to say something before I get into that is that what I'm going to say is not about the Ghanaian people. It's about the situation that caused some of the Ghanaian people to do what they do. Right. So I have a lot of love for, for my brothers in Ghana, especially my people from the God tribe. Shout out to y'all. So now let's get into it. Okay. Um, I think because of certain social economic situations on the ground in Ghana, it creates a culture where everyone's trying to get what they can that day. So there really, I didn't experience any sort of like clienteling or customer base building. It was all just trying to get that money right then and then trying mm -hmm. to get someone else. So mm -hmm. if they see that you're not from there or they, you can even be Ghanaian living in um, the diaspora coming home, they can smell like a new Negro, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then they're going to try to hit you for what I call the abroni price. And that's why I don't really fault a lot of them. But then when they, you start getting to the police and, and other institutions, then that's when I say, yo, y'all, you know, I think that the government of Ghana needs to really rein in some of this corruption because it's starting from the top and mm -hmm. then it's trickling down. And if the top is, is, has their neck on the people, the people, a lot of them are going to have no choice but to pass the buck on to whoever they could get paid off of. No, no, that, those are good points. Let me, and I, I like how you said that, you know, even in your original video, that your attack was not on the people, but basically on the system in which, you know, people are abiding by, not all, but but but, but a lot. Let me let me ask you this, because one of the things you said in, in, in one of the videos, I want to make sure I don't misquote you, was that before, you know, Ghana or any other country starts asking for, you know, African-Americans to come back or the diaspora, be it Ghana, you know, there's a lot of focus on the on, on things that need to be fixed there mm -hmm. uh, before we can even decide that we should come back. So we don't have uh, as many bad experiences. What did you mean by that? What I meant by that is not like a, um, and some some people take it the wrong way They take it like I'm trying to point out the mm -hmm. shortcomings or the opportunities for improvement. What I'm saying is that. I stand 100% with the people of Ghana and I'm going to right. hold their government accountable to do right by their own people first right. Right. before you start inviting inviting uh, competition in an already tight economy where mm -hmm. people are already trying to live hand to mouth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Take care of them people first, man, before you start inviting us back. That's That's my whole point with that. Okay. Let me ask you this because when you, you know, you, you know you're a well-traveled person, what did you expect before you went to Ghana? What did you expect that maybe you would experience? And then what did you actually experience more so? On okay. The so on the ground, 
the first five days, I wanted to leave. I called my wife. I said, look, change my ticket. I'm out of here. Real talk. I was, I, I, I was, I would have paid the extra money. I wanted to leave. Okay. And then I woke up and I said, yo, hold off. Let me give it a couple of days. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was because I was in a tourist spot, number one. Mm -hmm. So a tourist spot in Accra, you're going to have your scammers, just like a tourist spot in Times Square in New York City. You're going to have your scammers. Mm -hmm. So once I left that tourist spot mm -hmm. and started making connections with actual people, then mm -hmm. the whole shit changed. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that I didn't experience certain scams or people trying to scam me. But for the most part, the Ghanaian people are very nice. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go to Asia real quick. Thailand, they say it's the, the land of smiles. But sometimes there's something behind that smile. Right. Brooklyn raised me to know like, yo, I, how is this person coming? Are they smiling at me because they want to get some bread or are they just genuinely being nice? And I found that most of the time, the Ghanaians outside of the tourist spot were being genuinely nice. And okay. real quick, my first night, I walked up a, um, it was Oxford Street and they have like open gutters or open sewers, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't notice. I was fresh off the plane. I said, yo, I want to go get something to eat. So I fell into it. Boom. <laughs> all my, I <laughs> yo, straight up. I ruined my shoes and all of that. All my ID fell out of my phone case. All of it. I didn't realize for so two days later about, and then a week later, I was pissed for walking up Oxford Street again. And this little kid came up to me like, sir, sir, excuse me, did you lose your ID? And I'm like, yeah, they had all of my ID, my um, European residence card, my New York City driver's license, my um, ATM card. They had all of it. They wanted no money. So, of course, I broke them off with a little something just to show my appreciation. But that right there in a nutshell for me is it kind of sums up the majority of the experience that I had with people in Ghana outside of the tourist traps. Okay. Okay. Now let me, let me ask you this because you know, you're uh, a brother that is well versed on the history of our people. Uh, you, much more so I thought I was good, right? You know, you and brother George, y'all are on another level. I'm like, I'll be listening to y'all. I'm like, Oh, okay. I need to, you know, write this down, but mm -hmm. you're a person that has lived, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you're Europe right now. You're, you're living in, uh, you deal with the black community in the Netherlands and right. you, you, you deal with our, our, our community back home and then you've been to Ghana. What are some of the things that you feel that can connect our people? Because, you know, a lot right now, you know, there's a lot of content online where, you know, mm -hmm. there's this person saying about this and that person saying that. But as a person that's experienced all three communities, you know, if a person was trying to go back to Ghana or, or, or try to connect, what advice would you give? To Great question. Yeah. Great question. So what I don't like to see are people like black Americans going to Ghana talking about they don't have culture or I'm lost. There's a picture of this female holding up a sign talking about I'm a asylum seeker from America. When you move anywhere on this planet and you don't move from a position of power, right a position, you know, a position of, of pride, regardless of your situation, you're going to make yourself a target for scams, uh, for people to say, oh, you don't have any culture? Come let me sell, sell you your culture. Hey, what day were you born? Friday? Oh, your name is Kwaku. Saturday, your name is Kwesi. And I probably got that wrong, but this is just an <laughs> example. You right. know what I'm saying? So what I did when I went there, and I went there primarily for boxing to Ghana because um, the Ga tribe, they produce the most um, world champions and out of one um, little, little town called it called Bukom in Jamestown. So I went there primarily. But when I went there, I did cultural exchange. I didn't go there like I am a culturalist, black American Akata. I went there on some like, look, you know, I'm very proud of what my people did. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your people. Let's exchange. And if the right. conversation is, is not from a give and take, or if they don't want to know about mine, then the conversation stops. Like okay, say, boxing, say that one more time. Say that one more time. I'm glad you mentioned that. Say that one more time. Is that if the conversation doesn't come from a place of an exchange, a cultural exchange, mm -hmm. if I see that I, you're just pushing your joint on me and you don't want to hear about mine, then the conversation is over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, you know, before we were talking, I hope you don't mind me asking this because nah, bro. one of the things that I like building on what you were saying, I, I talk, talk about that a lot of times on this channel, is when you went to Accra or you went to Ghana, 
you know, you were going, you know, not like, you know, a soul search and although some people do that, but right. you also are, are very, uh, you're, you, you, you train fighters. You've been doing it. It's evident on your channel. You had an actual tangible skill that you were able to bring and that you were able to come in and develop. And I want you to tell the story about how, what your experience with the fighters were when you were out there training, uh, you know, in that town. Okay. You know, there's a, a word that people use. They say, be humble, be humble, be humble. I don't like that word be humble because it says the actual definition is to have a low sense of self-worth. But I understand what most people mean by be humble. And me being a dude from Brooklyn, New York City, I have a certain swag. I speak a certain way. So mm -hmm. I had to dial it back when I went there. So when I went there, I went as a student, not as a trainer. I've trained professional fighters and stuff in the kickboxing world. But I went there as a student. You know, mm -hmm. because I didn't want to kind of rub them the wrong way, so to speak. Right. And I just learned. And mm -hmm. once they saw me hit pads and hold pads, they, at the end of the first lesson, they sat around me in like a circle. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, brother, we really would appreciate if you could take over the lessons for the next, for the time that you're here. And I was honored. I felt honored that they even wanted to do it. I know I'm good. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. Um, there was no, I'm better. There was no pissing contest. Um, mm -hmm. we sparred. I'm 47 years old. These dudes went hard on me, but still with an era, with an era of respect. And because of that relationship that we made or that we formed, I came back and I took care of the whole team. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They asked me for used boxing equipment. I said, yo, I got you. And come on, if, if I, if I mess with you, I would never give you something that I wouldn't use myself. So okay. then I hooked them up with all like uh, top quality, brand new stuff. Okay. And actually the Kane K squad made it possible because that thing got caught up in some Ghanaian red tape, so to speak, but they um, fixed that for me. So yeah, that's a long answer to a, a short question. Okay. Okay. Now let me, let me talk about this because one of the things I like, you know, even with, uh, when they were there in KNK squad, because I, I was in Uganda, I've never been in Ghana, but seldomly will I talk about um, bad experiences that I have had. But, you know, I know a lot of times uh, people can romanticize, mm -hmm. you know, going back to Africa or visiting Africa. And a lot of times our people expectations might not necessarily be met. What would you say for a person that wants to you know, there might be one to repatriate or experience Africa. You know, what expectations would you say they should set for themselves of what they might experience or Ghana? It depends on their budget. OK, if you go with, um, you know, six pack money and you're trying to expect champagne dreams, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> so you have to understand your, your financial limitations. Mm -hmm. You have to also prepare yourself mentally for the culture shock, because you're going to get the culture shock. Once you prepare yourself financially and mentally, then you have to start putting the logistics in place. And what is that? Don't send any money to anyone in Africa. I mean, not even just Africa, anywhere in the world without being able to knock on that person's door if they haven't delivered on their promise. So don't send money. Don't fall for the the um, these confidence scams where people are pulling on people's they're pulling on people's um uh, heartstrings because mm -hmm. we have an emotional attachment to the continent and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that will play on that so mm -hmm. just use this how you would move in a hood you know what i'm saying move mm -hmm. that way and prepare that way when you go to the continent don't fall for the everything is cheap here because it's not right everything is not cheap there and if you want to live and pay two hundred dollars a month for rent you're going to be living in a place that looks like it's worth two hundred dollars a month Mm -hmm. So just be realistic. I would never tell anyone not to go, but just mm -hmm. prepare, prepare, prepare. Mm -hmm. Let me let me ask you this, because, I mean, obviously you, you you've you um, worked with other content creators and people that uh, that live there. And obviously, we know there's a slew of African-Americans that have went to, you know, you know, they have them all in the Gambia. They're now in Tanzania, yeah. uh, some are in Uganda. And um, in your opinion, from because you're actually living in Europe like me right now. So right. we're still like expats. So we have a little bit of idea of, of how it works living someplace else. But why do you think that repats from the African-American community 
are, some of them are having uh, problems, you know, in the new location in, 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 in like Ghana or Accra, despite, I mean, now 2020, there is a lot more information than we had like a 2015. But mm -hmm. why are African Americans having so many problems in, in a lot of these new places they're repatting to? Um, lack of preparation. Mm -hmm. um, also, the lack of respect for locals. Now, okay. there's certain things that I could say. There's certain videos I could have made when I was in Ghana and I made them and then I deleted them because while I have to balance truth with respect for the locals, um, it's a very fine line. So what we have in, in black American culture, I'm sure you've heard of barbershop conversations or like mm -hmm. beauty shop conversations. Like y'all will be talking about whatever you want. And then as soon as a white person comes in or, or someone not from our culture, then you stop. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, okay, mm -hmm. when they leave, then you start again. We have to understand that some conversations are barbershop conversations mm -hmm. when, when you go to the continent. So if you see something that you don't like, while you may be able to tell that truth, but it's how you tell that truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's how you tell it. And, you know, and sometimes you might want to just say, man, I ain't even going to say it because what you might end up doing is giving uh, the others more ammunition to shit on people that we share a lineage with. Right. Now, so so those those things you have to keep in your mind. And look, I've I've said and I've uh, showed certain things that people on the continent do not find favorable. But understand that where I'm coming from, this is not from the, the place of the locals. I'm gonna put mm -hmm. fire under the ass that have the, fire under the asses of people who have their boots on the necks of the locals. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I'm not gonna mm -hmm. go there and just be balling out of control when, when I come out my Airbnb, there's a little kid sitting right in front of my door in a place, in, in a situation that I don't like to see my people like that. When I say right. my people, I mean black people globally. Right. But yeah, so, you know, it's just, my mom used to tell me, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Right. Right, right, right. No, I, I definitely understand that. Let me ask you this, because, you know, with, because, you know, a lot of times people talk about, you know, the opportunities, you know, because, uh, you know, you have, uh, for example, a lot of, uh, I get a lot of messages from Ugandans that are in uh, people that say they want to, you know, come back to Uganda. And there's actually some Ghanaians in, 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 in a lot of Ghanaians in Europe or in America. And, um, you know, people talk about the opportunities. Well, when you were there in Ghana, obviously with with your fighting training and regiment, you were able to see that you had an opportunity if you wanted to take it uh, for the future. Do you right. believe that African-Americans have do we have a home on the continent? Do you think that there's something that, or do we have opportunities that we can take advantage of to assist the local people and partner in your opinion, from what you saw? <clears throat> I like the word that you use assist, assist. All right. The African revolution or the African uh, spring has to have an African face on it, a continental face on it. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is go to the continent with this, black Jesus mentality. Like I'm going to save you guys. I'm coming back to save you guys. And right. you see a lot of us that have that, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You can go there and look for opportunities and get in where you fit in, but you're going to have to have boots on the ground. And these are going to be the locals who know and understand uh, the, the shortcomings, the obstacles, and also know how to get around it. Um, there was certain things that I wanted to do on the up and up. And then I ended up getting screwed. And some of my people was like, no, bro, you got to do it this way. This, unfortunately, this is the way you have to do it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to listen to that. Um, the, the fighting thing is what I do in my part time. You know what I'm saying? It's like a hobby. Mm -hmm. But my my expertise, so to speak, is I work in the petrochemical industry. So I okay. saw a lot of opportunities there in terms of um, waste management, in terms of infrastructure, uh, Takarati is a um, is a city where they have oil and gas uh, industry, so to speak. But you have to be something in America to be something in Africa. You can't uh -oh. be a loser in America and then come to Africa talk about yeah, I'm I'm the king of Zamunda. It ain't gonna happen. I like how you said you have to be something in America 
yeah. to be something that ever. Why do people believe that, you know, they can just not be anything in America and just show up to Africa and just be? Wh- why do you think that that some people have that mindset? I'm not saying because, it's, because it's low key. Um, you know, it's low key not having value for 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 people in Africa. Mm. That that's what it is. It's like you really think you could just come being broke, jumping on a plane with three thousand dollars, thinking that you're going to build some empire. Uh, or do you have that low uh, of a of an outlook on on Africa? Because if that's the case, then it tells me number one that you're not you haven't done your homework. You haven't done your homework, and you haven't um, you know understood the realities of 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 politics on the ground in Africa. So. You shouldn't go there thinking that you can just become someone and reinvent yourself if you don't have the skills to back mm-hmm. that up. No, no, I, I definitely, I definitely agree, man. Let me ask you this though, because I know I don't want to drain all your battery, brother. But for those people that are going to come and, and and subscribe to your channel, I know you have a lot of good um, mm-hmm. information that you talk about. What are some of the things that that the subscribers that are going to come from the King Ghana channel? They can come over to your channel. What should they expect from your content? Well, they they should expect uh, brutal honesty. Brutal oh, honesty. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I pull no punches. Um, oh, no. And I and I'm the all the smoke guy, right? And you know, but I love my people. That's that's one thing. Understand that we can spar, we can go at it back and forth. But you know, I love my people, and I do for my people. I'm doing stuff in these streets here. I've done it in America. I'm doing it in Ghana. You know, we have to have these conversations. So mm-hmm. that we can finally say, all right, this is how you think, this is how I think. Where can we come in the middle? Um, right. I am a very proud uh, Black American, 100%. Um, I, don't, I didn't go to Ghana trying to be a Ghanaian. I found there were too many Black Americans that went out there trying their hardest to be something that they're not. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to be Ghanaian. What I saw is that a lot of Black Americans in Ghana didn't want to talk to each other. Mm. You know, I was yeah. They don't want to talk to each other. As a matter of fact, I was with these brothers from uh, what they call La. It's La Body, but they just call it La. We were at La Beach, and we were in a powwow, and a van pulled up, bunch of Black Americans from the South. So I was with two brothers from the South, actually three brothers from the South, myself and a bunch of um Ghanaians. Mm-hmm. So this one sister came over to us. Hey, how y'all doing? She knew we were black Americans. So, hey, sis, how you doing? She was older. Mm-hmm. Yo, someone came out of the van, like chaperoned their way and pulled her away. And the Ghanaians picked on it, picked up on it. They said, yo, what's wrong with you? Why you don't want her to talk to your, to your brothers? And she said, don't do that. That's not how we do in Africa. They said that to the black American. So wow. you got a lot of people over there that's caping and trying to be something they're not. Mm-hmm. When people say, yeah, I'm this and I'm that. I said, well, okay, do me a favor. Tell me that in tweet. Tell me that in God. <laughs> and if you can't tell me it in God, then you know you really need to, right. you know, pull it in and, and do a reality check. I'm not saying that you, if you want to con- reconnect and connect, do that. Right. But start from the basics. Communications are the basics. Don't go to Africa and you're picking out all your your outfits and you you got this career you want to do. And, and you know what most of them do, right? Real estate and tours. So a lot of that is just trying to eat off of other expats that's coming or repats right. going to the continent. That's right. another show for another day. But <laughs> what you need yeah, to be one. doing is understanding, number one, trying to learn the language and the culture. Mm-hmm. The reason why I mes- meshed with the God tribe so much is because, you know, they're known, unfortunately, as, as like, as like the, the bad boys of a crop. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. their heart, they got a big heart. They, I saw myself in them. You mm-hmm. feel me? Mm-hmm. But the crazy stuff is that on a plane, I was sitting next to this person. I'm not going to say what tribe they were from. But he said, yo, where you going in a crime? Like, I'm going to Jamestown. I'm going to Bukong. He said, oh, stay away from there. There's people from the God tribe that this, that that. So I'm like, damn, bro. You know, I saw tribalism before I got to the continent. Wow. On the plane, on a KLM from Amsterdam, in Accra, some dude I don't know what tribe, what ethnic group he was from. So I'm gonna stop saying tribe. I'm gonna say ethnic group. Right. And he walked up on me, right next to me, and he said, 
I hate these Nigerians. I wish they went went back to their country. And I'm like looking around like, Yo, who the hell is he talking to? I'm not Nigerian, right? But then I looked at him. He looked at me, then turned around and went the other way. He was talking, He's to, talking me. to you. <laughs> oh, man, that got Ghana night. Yo, real story. Since you said that, right? This is a true story. I was, I'm in Kenya, Wadi Maya. And, and uh, so we we were at the Yaya Center. And um, I always you know, go hang out there or whatever. But uh, he, he put me onto it. So, you know, they have mobile money in, um, you know, in Ghana, it's like MTN or whatever. But in, in Kenya, it's called M-Pesa. They have Airtel and pesa So we're staying in this place on Westlands. And, um, you know, we're going to the Yaya Center to meet up with some people that he knows. But the guy needs his money for the day. And we, mm -hmm. we have the money, but we just can't get it to him. So we need to, you know, send the money to him with the more money. The only problem is we don't have a registered M-Pesa account. So the only way that we could do it is we need to have somebody with an M-Pesa account to send the money for us. So we need to find an agent or a person with an M-Pesa account. We can give them the money that they can do it. So once we get to the Yaya Center, which is like a mall, mm -hmm. we, we're, we're, you know, he's going to all these places like, this store, this impasa place, you know, and uh, so he gets into the place and he's like, you know, go to the guy like, yo, listen, we, we need to send this money to this guy. We you know we don't have an account. So the guy was like, listen, the only way you can do it is you have to convince somebody here to, you know, send the money for you. So we're, we're, he's talking to the to, to, to Kenyan ladies or whatever. And they're like, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. You're a Nigerian dude. She's like, no, I'm from mm -hmm. Ghana. Like, no, no, you're a Nigerian. No, I, yeah. you guys are scam artists. I don't want to send anything from you. This dude, I'm sitting there like, I'm watching this shit the whole time. Like, yo, this is like one. At the time, he wasn't as big as he is now, but he was big enough that when we would go to like Java's house or someplace, people would stop him in the street. We in the club, people would right. stop him in the club. So he big enough that everybody know who he, like people know, like at least 12 times somebody stopped him and like, yo, I watch you on YouTube. So people knew who he was, you know? <clears throat> and right there, I was able to see how he was getting discriminated on just for being a West African in Africa. I was, right. I was, I couldn't believe it, bro. I was like, damn, that's, that's, that's some cold. But it, just like you said, it, it happened right there in front of me. So this is what I, I want to, this is one of the more unpopular points that I speak about on my channel, mm -hmm. which is, we are not the same. When I was in uh, Bukom, when I went to Makola Market, people immediately were like, Black American, Black American. They call me, um, they call me Black American. Some dude called me The Rock, all kind of stuff, right? They knew I was different, but right. I didn't look at that as something negative. You right. know what I'm saying? Because when they were calling me Black American, they were calling me that from a positive aspect. Mm -hmm. I think Ghanaians or Africans will respect you more if you come as who you are and mm -hmm. not perpetrating like you're somebody else. Because mm -hmm. even on the continent, there's so many different ethnic groups, there's so many different languages. Mm -hmm. They do not see each other as the same, even mm -hmm. in the country that I went to. You could right. take that, West Africa, you could take South. Africans are of different ethnic groups and that's how they are. You know what I'm saying? I would say, I say, embrace your differences. Be proud of who you are. Stand mm -hmm. in the strength and come from a, a position of power mm -hmm. and do that cultural exchange, not mm -hmm. cultural or, or culture vulturing. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Some dude asked me, he's like, oh, what's your Ghanaian name? He's like, I, don't, I said, I don't have a Ghanaian name. I'm black American. Like, my, this is my name. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, I, what's your Ghanaian name? You Ghanaian. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like and, and it's no shade, but right. I'm not a Ghanaian. I right. was born in America. My, my my culture is American, black American. And that's why I'm black first. That's what I have on, on this sleeve right here. I'm black first all mm -hmm. the time. So before I'm an American, I'm a black American. Mm -hmm. Before I'm a man, I'm a black man. So mm -hmm. I go with that mindset. And when I see another black person, I don't see an enemy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I see a, a, a possible... Um, you know, someone that I can co collaborate with or something like that, but mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. to get to know you first. So I say, mm -hmm. when you go to the continent, understand who you are, and if you're going to try to adopt the tribe, that comes after you've made um, connections with those people. Right. They have to invite you, and you can't just invite yourself and say, yo, 
I'm a Fanti now, or I'm a Shanti because you like the story of uh, Yeah Asante Wa or something like that. No, you you have to start from the ground up, making connections, learning the language, learning the culture, and then these people, if they see that you're worth being brought into their tribe, then they'll do it. It'll happen in due time. But don't go out there trying to swagger jack people's culture. No, I, I mean, I definitely agree because when I'm in Uganda, I'm definitely me, you know, and uh, people always come up to me like, why don't you speak Luganda? I'm like, hey, man, I, listen, I've been living in Poland for five years. I don't speak Polish either. But right. you know, it's not like I won't try. But, you know, I, but the, the same the same way you're saying, I'm from the West Coast. You know, I'm, I'm me. You know, I have strong Pan-African leanings. And, and what I do is with my work. And with, with, with how I feel doesn't mean that, you know, that I'm disrespecting anybody, but I'm I'm who I am. Right. I'm, I'm coming as who I am. And, uh, and and so that. But, brother, you did a really excellent job, man, really breaking this stuff down. We definitely gonna have to do a show on that, uh, that tourism and real estate hustle. Yeah, um, that's the crazy hustle, man. Yeah. Everybody doing tours, man. But let me ask you this, because we want to put this on the screen. Um, it, it, Do you want people to follow you also? We're going to put the uh, his um channel link to the first comment pinned to the top but brother do you have a, a you know any place on social media you want the brothers to follow you sisters to follow you here no nah, i don't really do a lot of social media um i'm too busy getting this money in these streets legally <laughs> um but if you want to connect me on facebook it's yanga y-a-n-g-a black first that's who i'll be that's my name you know in the so-called conscious community here in holland it's yanga Black first. And I took the name Yanga because I like the story of Gaspar Yanga, who was a um, maroon from that was shipped to Veracruz, Mexico, and he fought against the Spanish. Um, and he, he put in work with that machete. So that, that's who I um, relate to him and Khaled Muhammad, the Honorable Khaled Muhammad. So Yanga oh, Black first on Facebook, or you can subscribe to Knock Measy, and you're going to just get a whole bunch of, one day I might be training kickboxing the other day i might be talking about the ashanti empire the next day i might be talking about something else so it is what it is thank you brother for your um for your time i appreciate you and um hopefully we could work in the future oh yeah man i i, I like your uh you know not no nonsense attitude towards this because I, I believe that this space needs uh uh some uncomfortable uh opinions so from different people so brother thank you for coming on definitely going to try to do that next week and uh, make sure you guys subscribe to his channel. The first comment pinned to the top. We're going to go ahead and put an arrow there. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you for supporting the channel, everybody. Peace out. Peace. Peace.